Yes, guys, question number 19, <clears throat> question number 13. 13th question. A Limited is a holding company and BNC are its subsidiaries of A Limited. The summarized balance sheet as on 31st December 2011 is given as follows. There are two reserves. One is a reserve and a PNL account. Intercompany balances are C Limited 3000. Check your asset side in C Limited. C limited balance sheet asset side. A limited is 3000. You can cancel the 3000 and 3000 in your consolidated balance sheet. And also one more. A limited 7000 on the liability side and B limited on the asset side in A limited balance sheet is 8000. That will give you 1000 rupees of cash in transit again. The share capital of the companies are divided into 10 rupees share each. A holds 8000 shares in, A, in B limited and 1000 shares in C limited. B holds 4,000 shares in C Limited, all the investment being made on 30th June 2011. Date of acquisition is 30th June, while the balance sheet date is 31st December, that is 6 months on in the current financial year. On 31st December 2010, the position is given as follows. I am more concerned about only reserve and PL. The reserve and PL balances are given to you. Some other items of credit as fixed assets, stock and trade datas are given. I will not use those values. 10% dividend is proposed by each company. Should I deduct the amount of dividend while analyzing the profits or not? I will have to deduct. The reason is 30th June is your date of acquisition. So half of the dividend of the current year will be taken as pre-acquisition. Remaining half should be taken as post-acquisition. If the entire dividend is declared out of post-acquisition reserves, no problem. But here, when I am declaring a dividend for a year, it is for the entire year. And my acquisition is exactly in between of the year. So the first six months dividend is pre-acquisition, remaining six months dividend is post-acquisition. I told you, if it is completely declared out of post-acquisition reserves, then you don't have to deduct. Here I will have to deduct compulsory because I have a pre-acquisition dividend in that. The whole of stock of B Limited on 30th June 2011 4,000 was sold to A Limited for 4,400 and it remained unsold. So 400 rupees of unrealized profit in the balance sheet of, sorry, in the analysis of B Limited. Cash in transit of 1,000 rupees that was evident from the balance sheet itself, though he has given it as a separate adjustment. Prepare a consolidated balance sheet for the group on 31st December 2011. Start with your date of acquisition and shareholding pattern. Date of acquisition 30th June 2011. My shareholding pattern number of shares held and percentage holding. First, let's start with B Limited. B Limited is only held by A Limited and the balance shares by minority. Hundred percent holding the total number of shares. Each share is divided into ten rupees. So B Limited, one lakh share capital, ten thousand shares. Number of shares held by A is 8,000. So minority obviously should hold 2,000 shares, giving me a share holding of 80-20. Next go to C Limited. C Limited is held by both A Limited directly, B Limited indirectly and minority interest. Number of shares in C Limited, 60,000 share capital, that means 6,000 shares. A Limited holds 1,000, B Limited holds 4,000. 1,000, 
4000. So minority 1000. So this is 1 by 6, 2 by 3, 1 by 6. I can't get perfect percentages, so I'm taking the ratios instead. Once you get your shareholding pattern, you can go for your analysis of reserves. Always start with your indirect subsidiary. Indirect subsidiary is C limited. Analysis of reserves of subsidiary with respect to date of acquisition that is 30th June 2011 I'll start with C limited first I'm not analyzing the reserve guys unnecessary completely because directly I can check what is a C limited reserve at the end of the year on the balance sheet date it was 9000 at the beginning of the year the information given in point number 4 indicates that the reserve at the beginning of the year was 7500 that means my current year appropriation is how much current year appropriation is 1500 out of 1500 six months appropriation is 750 which is also pre so 750 plus 7500 8250 pre and 750 post i don't need analysis for this so what we have to analyze is only the PNL part. Come to the PNL. PNL balance is 9000. Balance as on 31st December 2011. 9000. Now, balance at the beginning of the year, PNL is 3000. Balance was on 1st Jan 2011 is 3000. So, my current year profit 6000. Out of the current year profits, he is proposing 10% dividend. 10% dividend of the current year. How much is the share capital? 60,000. So 60,000, should I divide and then deduct dividend or should I deduct and then divide? Whenever I am talking about a current year dividend, current year dividend is paid out of current year profits. So first deduct and then we will divide it between 6 months. There will be nothing left to divide guys. After the payment of dividend, the current year profits have become zero. So the entire amount will be taken as pre-acquisition reserve. The 3000 will be taken as pre-acquisition reserve. This 6000 will see the treatment. We will see the treatment for the 6000. A lot of shares in this 6,000. One-sixth A will get, two-thirds B will get, one-sixth minority interest will get. Minority interest, I'll add it to minority interest. A, one-sixth, one-sixth of 6,000 is 1,000. The 1,000 also, I'll say, 1,000 is full year dividend. My acquisition is 30th June. So, 500 will be taken as pre-acquisition dividend in cost of control. 500 will be taken as post-acquisition dividend in reserves for CBS. Then, come to the 6,000 of two-thirds, B will get... 4,000 dividend. If B is getting 4,000 dividend, 2,000 I'll say at pre-acquisition, take it to cost of control. Baki 2,000, balance of that, I'll take it in analysis of reserves. Analysis of reserves for B limited. So analysis of reserves for B limited in the post-acquisition reserves, I'll increase it by 2,000 rupees saying that it is a post-acquisition dividend. So let's see, B limited. There is one and... Uh, the B limited has a unrealized profit also. One more adjustment is there. B limited. P and L. Balance as on 31st December 2011. 
P&L balance of B Limited is 12,000. Split. Balances on 1st Jan 2011. Read the balances given. P&L balance of four, B Limited is 4. So my current year profit is 8000. Now I'll have to deduct the amount of dividend. How much is the dividend? 10% of 1 lakh 10,000. Proposed dividend is 10,000. This will result in minus 2000, which should be split up to 30 June minus 1000 from 30th June to 31st December minus 1000. This does not have adjustment, but here I have adjustments. If C Limited proposed a dividend, B Limited should get the share of dividend because B Limited holds two thirds of C Limited share. So two thirds of 6,000, they will get 4,000 rupees as dividend. But out of 4,000 also, his date of acquisition is 30th June. So half of the year pro dividend, I'll take it as pre-acquisition. Remaining half, I can add it as post-acquisition dividend. So post-acquisition dividend. From C, you have to calculate guys, 6000 into 2 thirds into half. So 2000 dividend we will add. That is a dividend income for B limited. And one last adjustment is unrealized profit. Unrealized profit direct 400. 4000 rupees stock has been sold to the letter at 4400. Why here unrealized profit? Not here. Before the deduction. Before I distribute itself, shouldn't I deduct it here? No, because unrealized profit adjustment for intercompany transactions always from post acquisition profit. So here. At least advantage is he has already given you the date as well. Even if the date is not given, I will take it here. So 600 is post acquisition. This 4000, this minus 1000. Total is 3000. Pre acquisition. My distribution of reserves Check reserve. Reserve of C limited. First my distribution for B for C limited guys. Then I will distribute for B. C limited reserve. 7500 opening reserve. Pre. 9000 closing reserve. 1500 appropriation. Not 1500 post. Out of 1500 current year. Half is pre. Half is post. So that means 750 pre. 750 post. So 7500 plus 750 is 
ఆఫ్ చేశాను ఇప్పుడు ఎడిట్ చేయరా అక్కడ కంటిన్యూ చేశాను ఎస్ గైస్ డిస్ట్రిబ్యూట్ ఏ వన్ బై సిక్స్ బి టూ బై త్రీ మైనారిటీ ఇంట్రెస్ట్ వన్ బై సిక్స్ వన్ బై సిక్స్ ఎయిటీన్ సెవెంటీ ఫైవ్ సెవెన్ థౌసండ్ ఫైవ్ హండ్రెడ్ ఐ గెస్ distribution for c that is then start distribution of b b again pre acquisition and post acquisition again under post acquisition i have a general reserve as well as a pnl so let's start first one under b limited is the reserve check the b limited reserve opening reserve is 8000 balance sheet reserve is 10000 8000 anyways pre because it is at the beginning of the year current year appropriation is 2000 out of the 2000 up to 30th june is pre acquisition after 30th june is post acquisition 1000 pre 1000 post so in total i can say 9000 pre and 1000 post pnl i don't have to think about so much because i have already solved it PNL 3000 rupees is pre acquisition and 600 rupees is post acquisition i can't stop it here we have to go for b limited share in post acquisition reserves of c b limited share in post acquisition reserve of c is only 500 rupees for general reserve This is twelve thousand fifteen hundred six hundred distributed to A and minority eighty twenty nine six double zero two four double zero twelve hundred three hundred this is four eighty one twenty. once we are one done with the distribution you can go for your cost of control you will have three columns in cost of control a and b a and c and also b and c and the deduction of pre acquisition dividend becomes compulsory because there is a pre acquisition dividend there is some pre acquisition dividend you need to deduct it
cost of control a and b a and c and finally b and c starting with your cost of investments reduced by pre acquisition dividend cost of investment is 95000 13053000 pre acquisition dividend a and b check what is b limited dividend 10 what is a limited share 80% 8000 out of 8000 half 4000 is pre acquisition a and C, C limited dividend is 6,000. A limited share is 1 by 6,000. Half is pre-acquisition, 500. Acquisition is on 30th June. So half is pre, half is post. B and C, B two-thirds of 6,000 is 4,000. So out of that half, 2,000 is pre, 2,000 is post. Net costs are 91,000, 12,500. And 51,000. Compare this with share in net assets. Divided between share capital and pre acquisition reserves. Each share has a capital face value of 10 rupees. A and B, 8,000 shares, 80,000 share capital. A and C, 1,000 shares, 10,000 share capital. B and C, 4,000 shares, 40,000 share capital. Pre-acquisition reserves, A and B, 9,600. This is 89,600. A and C, 1875, B and C, 7500. 1875 and 7500. This will be 11875, 47500. All the cases will result in goodwills. This is 1400. This is 625. And this is 3500. Combined basis, this is 5525. That is a combined goodwill. Minority interest. I need two minority interest, one in B limited and one in. C limited. Start with his share in net assets. Share in net assets given by capital plus reserves. Their share in share capital plus their share in reserves. For their share in reserves, we add pre acquisition reserve as well as post acquisition reserve. Under post acquisition reserve, again I have two reserves, I guess. One is a general reserve and the other one is PNL. Fill up till here first. In B limited, share capital, 2000 shares, 20,000 rupees. In C limited, 1000 shares, 10,000 rupees. My reserves in B limited, 2400, 300 post acquisition general reserve, 120 post acquisition PNL. In C limited, 1875 pre acquisition reserve and post acquisition general reserve is 125 PNL is nil. Do not forget their share in dividend. His share in proposed dividend. We have to add it. It is unpaid. It is just proposed now. It is unpaid. That is also his share of net assets. 
add that. Do not forget this adjustment. Check. There is no pre-acquisition, post-acquisition for minority. Be it pre or post, ultimately it is payable. So B Limited proposed a dividend of 10,000. Out of which 20% belongs to him, 2,000 rupees. C Limited proposed a dividend of 6,000. 160 is his share, 1,000 rupees. So this is 24,820 in the first case. In the second case, it is 13,000. Put together, this is 37,820. Reserves for CBS, consolidated balance sheet reserves. One column for reserve, other column for PNL. First, adopt a limited balances. Add his share in post acquisition reserves. What is a limited share? A limited reserve balances are forty eight thousand and sixteen thousand. Forty eight thousand of reserve and sixteen thousand is his PNL in the balance sheet. A limited share in post acquisition reserves of B. Check your distributions. 1200 and 480, 1280. A limited share in post acquisition reserves of C limited is 125 and nil. You can't stop here. You can't stop here because he, al he also has. Post acquisition dividend. Post acquisition dividend should be taken to PNL. Post acquisition dividend from B and C. Well, again, you can calculate or simple logic I'll use that my pre acquisition should be equal to my post acquisition dividend because exactly the acquisition is half. So I don't have to calculate again. Whatever is a limited share in pre-acquisition dividend, same amounts you should get even in post-acquisition dividend as well. So this is 4000 and this is 500. 4500. That is his share in post-acquisition dividends of companies which should be taken to PNL. Do not forget he is proposing dividend as well. He proposed a dividend of 10% as well. All the companies are proposing. So he proposes on his share capital of 1 lakh. So his dividend is 10,000. Negative figure. The story ends there. That will give you our consolidated reserves. 49,325. And this is 10,980. Check your balances. All the working notes are completed. You can go for your consolidated balance sheet.
Yes, guys, let's get into the balance sheet. Consolidated balance sheet of A Limited as on 31st December 2011. Equity and liabilities. Shareholders funds share capital. What is share capital? A limited share capital is one lakh. Reserves and surplus. You got a goodwill there, so only those two reserves. Reserve and PL. Pick up the values directly. 49,325, 10,980. Then we have minority. Minority interest is 37,820. Non current liabilities There is no non current liability there only current liability that is creditors of twelve thousand Proposed dividend, the proposed dividend, so even that should appear. Go for your assets. Non-current assets. Tangible fixed assets. Tangible fixed assets are 20 plus 60 plus 43. The total amount is 123. Intangible assets. Goodwill five five two five. There is no other non current assets. Directly go for current assets then. There is an adjustment to stock. Do not forget that. How many current assets are there? Stock and cash and transit. Stock debtors and cash and transit. Stock, debtors, cash and transit. Stock, stock value is 12,000 minus 400. 12,000 minus 400, 11,600. Debtors, 26 plus 21 plus 32, 53 plus 26 is 79. Thousand rupees of cash in transit also exists. I will give you a balance sheet total. Balance sheet total is two lakh twenty thousand hundred and twenty five rupees.